Welcome everybody to the Years of Texas Speaker Series at uh, February 2019. Um, today we have an uh, um, amazing presentation and the title of it is Texas GIO and Beyond. Um, we have uh, the speakers today. It's going to be um, Felicia uh, uh, Rates and uh, we have Ileana Karic. We also have Gayla Mullen. Uh, that is a uh, StratMap program manager. Uh, Felicia is the Deputy Ge uh, Geographic Information Officer for Teneris. Uh, she works closely with the GIS community to establish strategic direction and goals uh, for GIS initiatives across the state of Texas. Uh, she began in Teneris in 1999 and uh, has a degree from University of Texas at Austin. And uh, she's a uh, been very instrumental in the uh, strategic mapping program uh, as known as StratMap at, at Teneris. Uh, Ileana has uh, joined uh, 2018 with Teneris at the Texas Water Development Board and uh, she's the geographic data coordinator after uh, 20 years in, in Texas geography community. So uh, and Gala once again is a StratMap program manager over there as well. So we really appreciate you all uh, being here today and uh, we will be recording this and it'll be posted to our YouTube site after the presentation and we download. So go ahead and take it away and uh, appreciate it. Excellent, thank you. Um, hi all, my name is Felicia and I'm joined by my colleagues, um, as was mentioned, Ileana Kodic and uh, our special guest today, uh, Gayla Mullins. Um, so today we're gonna give you an overview of what happens in the basement of the Stephen F. Austin building which is a building located uh, in the Capitol Complex between downtown Austin, Texas, and the lovely University of Texas campus. Um, I say that because a lot of people don't understand that we are actually in a basement <laughs> with no windows. So that's why we try to get out often, and we really appreciate this opportunity to talk to people about what we do. Um, so we do have a lot of content to cover, and we look forward to your questions following the presentation. Um, so get those ready to go. So um, I want to talk a little bit about what made us the GIO. So who made you GIO? A lot of people ask us that question, how did we become that? Because we've been um, in operation since 1972 as sort of the mapping agency for Texas. Um, but in 2011, uh, things changed. And um, that was in large part due to um, the Sunset uh, Commission coming in to give, um, to, to basically analyze what it is that we did and they, um, you know, th th their question was, well, you know, why, uh, why doesn't Tenris, if Tenris helps with emergency management and they're really um, doing their best to try to get priority data out there for the public, you know, they need to have a little bit stronger of, um, of a mandate um, at, 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 uh, at the Capitol. So um, that's essentially what happened. So in 2010, when we were, uh, when we were undergoing the Sunset Report, um, they made recommendations to uh, the legislature uh, to create this geographic information office. So, so that was the ultimate push was from the Sunset Committee. And um, so they said, you know, they suggested to name the director of Tenris as the GIO. So that title right now belongs to Richard Wade, who is the deputy executive administrator and the director of Tenris. Um, so his responsibilities, or our responsibilities, I should say, um, are clearly defined in statute, and we do our best to ensure compliance. But the way that we do that is we um, meet monthly with GIS personnel at other state agencies, um, as well as the public. So we're constantly striving to get input from outside sources, um, and I'll give you a little bit more background uh, into that. Uh, but if anybody's interested and they want to read the full statute that uh, Tinder abides by, it's uh, the Texas Water Code 16.021. So, um, so if you're ever bored, there you go. Take a look at that. <laughs> Um, so the next thing I want to talk about uh, is that we're revamping a lot of our websites, so we're trying to bring more information to you because um, we realize sometimes, that, you know, being in the basement, as often as we try to get out, there are things that we um, feel like we need to bring to you. So we've revamped one of the pages, the GIO page, so you can see Richard's picture right there. Um, and one of the things that was asked of us um, probably several years ago, was, would we consider having an events page or an events calendar? So right now, we freshened up the GIO page and we're working on bringing you that information. Um, it's sort of um, in production right now, so you'll see this um, if you go to our website. 
Um, but if you have any kind, yeah, you see the first the first event is the ERISA Speaker Series. So um, obviously after this happens, I'll have to go back and, and redo that page. But um, we are working on a calendar. We want something that's contribute, uh, that you'll be able to contribute to. Um, so for the time being, because this has been a, a sort of a prototype, uh, we would need you to email us. So if there's any events that are happening, like I heard you uh, at the beginning talk about the MAPI hours, I think we can publish those. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll definitely get clarification, but I think those are important. I think it's important for the GIS professional community out there to be able to understand where the networking opportunities are because we're constantly pushing that. You know, it's, 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 you know, often, of course, it's what you know, but it's also who you know. And I think being able to connect with one another is, is super important. And so we really appreciate Eurissa um, um, making those things happen. So we want to we want to make sure we highlight those things. Um, so please be sure and contact us for that. Um, so I wanted to uh, change gears a little bit and talk to you. Uh, you know, we do things within the state with our uh, state GIO, GIS professionals, rather at different state agencies and in different entities. But one of the things that we do is we're trying to focus um, nationally. So on a national level. Um, FDDC, there's, uh, we talked about this at the, at the forum uh, fairly recently, back in October. Um, there was a Geospatial Data Act that's been in the works at the federal level for the last four years, almost five years. Um, and so it was finally passed um, and signed into law. And basically what it does is, 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 is this legislation, uh, the Geospatial Data Act, is critical to building um, the national spatial data infrastructure. And um, it, it really gives um, sort of like the, the GIO uh, statute, um, it also gives more teeth at the federal level. So even though the FDDC has been um, established for many, many years, um, it, it sort of solidifies what it is that they do. Um, so we're going to continue to follow the FDDC and the Geospatial Data Act. Um, we're also trying to get a seat on the uh, NGAC, which is the National Geospatial Advisory Committee. Um, if we can get a seat on that, then we can help to drive and also to understand what's happening at the national level. So just, just be aware that we are we're working on that and we hope to bring you more information as it, as it uh, comes, as it trickles down to us. So. Um, one of the other things that we mentioned at the forum uh, is. Oh, you had that hyperlinked. I did. Oh, I did. You want to go back? A little. A little. Oh, I go back to the. A little hiccup here. One second. Did that work? There we go. Okay. We're back in business. Okay. So um, one of the things that we mentioned um, also is the state plan coordinate system of 2022. So I'm not sure if anybody knows about this, but I just found out about it in September. <laughs> and so apparently this has been in the works since early 2018, uh, that this is coming down the pipe. Um, I don't have more information on it now, but hopefully um, as they continue to work towards this, um, we'll, we'll be um, highlighting this in our, in our news feed so that you understand when this is coming down. But Essentially, there's some numbers that are going to change because obviously the earth is changing. So we got to we got to keep up with those kinds of things. So um, one of the other things we've um, been a member of the National States Geographic Information Council for many, many years. Um, we weren't necessarily as involved as, as we have been in the last three years, but essentially this is um, a group that is comprised of GIOs, state GIOs around uh, the U.S., um, and also private geospatial companies, um, and also uh, federal, regional, and local GIS leaders. So NISDIC is a good vehicle for us. It, it helps us to connect with other state initiatives. So if we're, if we're working on something in Texas, we can look to other states if they've already done it, or we can be, um, you know, give advice to other states that are, that are looking to do what we've done in the past. A lot of people look to strap map program uh, to, to emulate that. So, so that's always a good thing that we can give back to. But it, it's a really good group. We attend the um, annual conference every year. They also have a mid-year, but um, we have to be careful and cognizant of our budget. Um, but you know, we try to also make sure that we're following them and give you information as it, um, as it comes down the pipe as well.
And then one of the most important uh, jobs that we have um, as the GIO is um, the GIO report. And so I know several of you already have seen this and have seen this cover. Hopefully you've read it. Um, the inaugural report came out in 2016. Um, it took us two years to write it. Um, and we are already starting on the report that's due in 2021. Um, so the report, it targets our successes as well as our needs um, to efficiently answer state agency business. So we work very closely with state agencies to understand what their needs are. Um, and by default, these needs affect the general public, um, whether they are users of GIS data or simply the beneficiaries of any of the business results that, it, it, that comes to fruition. So we are already beginning uh, our next report, um, we're at least the outline that's due in 2021, and we're thinking maybe if we have enough material um, that we can produce an interim report because we have that option. That option is, so essentially the mandate says that a report is due every five years uh, or not, not later than every five years. So if we want to, we can do an interim report. Um, but the main audience, um, and it states this in our mandate, is that it goes to the um, the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the speaker of the house. So um, hopefully their staff reads it, and so what we understand, they do read it. Um, we've been getting a lot of attention in this uh, current legislative session, um, so so that's, that's, that's been a good thing. Um, yeah, so the 2016 report has already shown its worth, even, that inaugural report. So we worked very closely with state agencies, um, and they uh, pretty much, you know, we understood that the two priority data sets were address points and parcel data. So one of the things that the report uh, allowed us to do was it allowed us to create another report um, that basically talked about the state of what parcel data was in the state. So we had um, something like 212 uh, verified uh, county appraisal districts that had parcel data. Um, and then so the rest of them, the 40, 50, some, 40 something, um, we, were, we, we had to go look after. So what that also did was it allowed us to hire uh, a full-time staff member, which is a brand new uh, position. Um, and so that person is Ileana Cottage. And so now I'm gonna turn it over to her so she can talk a little bit about what she's been working on, which is what are those two priority data sets. Hi everyone, this is Ileana and um, I'm very excited to be here at Tenor. It's been here since April. So I'm thankful to this report and to the parcel report because it um, ultimately created my position and I've been trying to work here for like 10 years. <laughs> it all worked out. Um, so I'm gonna to talk to y'all about the, this initiative that I'm working on to um, aggregate statewide address point and land parcel data. So just to talk to you a little bit about who's who's involved in this, it's TINRIS, uh, which we are part of the Texas Water Development Board, the DIR, GIS Solutions Group. So when Felicia said earlier that we meet monthly with other state agencies, that's part of that group. We're also engaging with stakeholders from across the state and industry experts. Um, you know, we want to know what other states have done, what's worked, what hasn't worked, you know, what products are out there um, and thankfully we have not met much resistance actually most people are really excited about it and willing to help so the goals of this are to source statewide authoritative data and we're not creating data we are just gathering I use the word aggregating um, we're not editing we're taking data um, on a voluntary basis from people who already create it. So the, uh, the, the, the authoritative data source for the address points at this point in time are the 911 GIS coordinators from across the state. So they're the folks that create um, address data and then that data gets aggregated up, you know, from cities to counties to COGS to either CSEC, the state agency, or to the 911 Alliance. So we're working with all of those folks and um, really trying to get that from somebody who's already aggregating rather, you know, rather than going to every single city in the state, I'd rather go to the highest level of aggregation that already exists and work with them. 
And our goal is to gather that data annually. Um, we'll, we'll hopefully be able to do it more than annually fairly soon, but that's our initial goal. We're gonna share it via the TINRAS data catalog and educate folks <laughs> about um, how the data was created and how the consumers would like to consume the data. Because right now I feel like this data are, you know, these data are created for very specific purposes, but we see value, value in recycling that data for multiple purposes. So I'm just trying to make that connection there between the data creators and the data consumers. So the short-term and long-term goals for address points so are, um, like I said, long-term, we want to do annual updates from the local providers and aggregators. And short-term, what we've done already is there was a project that was done by the UT Center for Water and the Environment to aggregate address points for flood purposes. And that data was gathered between 2015 and 2017. So we have that data right now available on our website for download. It's over 9 million address points. And that data was also submitted to the National Address Database. So again, when Felicia was talking about NISDIC and all, um, you know, really understanding what's going on at the federal level, um, that's how we're partnering with the feds. And, you know, instead of them having to do this on their own, we're, um, we're facilitating that as well. And then for parcels, we are considering um, a short-term license product for use by state agencies only, but long-term, we really do want a free public data set that anybody can download on the TENRAS data catalog. So we've got uh, committees going for both of these right now. Uh, we've got data on, on the website, which I'll show you a, a sneak peek of those in a, in a second. So the parcel data sources include local appraisal districts, about half the state has a third party vendor, um, and there's three pretty big ones, BIS Consulting, Pritchard and Abbott, and Harris Govern. And then there's a few other small ones. We're working with all of those folks. And, and then also there's some large commercial vendors that you all might be familiar with, CoreLogic, First American Data Tree, and Digital Map Products. So those really have a lot of enriched data and different types of applications associated with that data. And we're working with, with those folks as well. So the sources for address points. Um, so I'm sure that most of you know what a COG is, a, a council of government, or they're also called regional planning commissions. So there are a COG or an RPC everywhere in the state. So the whole state is covered by a COG. However, 911 is not always at the COG. So the top right, those are the COGs that have 911. And then on the left top and the left bottom, those are the areas where 911 is not in the COG. So if you look at it graphically on the map, the colored areas are in the top right. So those are the COGs that still have 911. And anything in gray, um, or with a number is on the left. I know it's super confusing. It took me a long time to figure this out, but just trust me <laughs> on this. Um, it's capped. It's pretty capped. <laughs> right? Exactly. But as I said, um, you know, these are the higher level aggregators. So they don't always create the data, but they are already aggregating the data. So I'm working with them on getting that data on a regular uh, basis. So this is just a screenshot of our website. So if you go to the tenorist.org website, you click on strap map and then land parcel, you'll get this page. And we currently have 94 counties of parcels available. I've got about six more that I need to post, so we're up to 100. Um, and we'll hopefully have more um, coming online as we work with those third party vendors really soon. As we have updates, they will be posted here. So feel free to go here, you know, anytime. And as we get them, we're going to post them. We're not going to hold them hostage. So they will be up here. Any updates to the project will be up here. Any new um, information. And then also for address points, we have a, a site for that. This download address points, that's the 2017 data that I had mentioned that the UT Center for um, Water and the Environment had. I'm also um, 
collecting a newer version of that right now, and we are in the process of posting that. So we should have that posted, I don't know, within a month or so, some more additional data um, for address points. I've got about 4 million so far. So um, as you can see here, StratMap, all of these things underneath the word address points are part of the StratMap program. So um, Gayla is here to talk about the other items in StratMap. <laughs> That's right. Hi, I'm Gayla, and um, I am happy to be joining Ileana and Felicia today and all of you um, for this speaker series. Um, so, uh, yes, I've been at Tenderest for about 10 years, and during this time, I have worn the ortho imagery hat. I've been the lead for our statewide ortho imagery data set, and then within the last year, I had manager added to my job description. So <laughs> I'm still um, the ortho imagery lead, but I get to um, learn and guide um, our other um, strap map data sets. So I'm very um, excited about that. So I'll start with LIDAR, um, and I just have one slide here because I do want to take us over to um, the website that has the most current information and guide you through the interactive map. So, but one thing I do want to say is that it's very exciting that um, after almost 20 years we <laughs> of hitting Texas with LIDAR data, we are almost at a statewide coverage. And this has been no small feat. This is very expensive data. It has involved multiple, multiple partners. Um, we um, have various uh, levels of different um, accuracy levels of LIDAR data, which is why this kind of looks like a patchwork map. Um, but let me take you over to the site and walk you through our status map. So this is the um, tenris.org site under um, program, and you'll see um, I'm on the LIDAR page. So when I scroll down, I can get to the interactive map that shows our coverage. This is a Cardo map, and if I expand it, I can see it a lot more clear. So what this is showing is everything in green, uh, I'll take off the gold for a sec, everything in green is what's available now and downloadable now from the Tenerus website. And when you click on each of these um, areas, we call these project or collection areas because um, our LIDAR patchwork over time has not been, say, specific to counties or specific to a quad system. It has to do with funding and partner interests, um, et cetera, whether it covers a certain watershed or not. Um, so, but it is a clickable map, and so when you do click on the collection, so for example, this is um, a strat map uh, project led by Tenris of the Central Texas area, flown in 2017. You can see what available products you can get, the resolution, the flight year, et cetera. And then you would just go to our data catalog to actually get to the, to the data. Again, this is just the status map. So if I overlay the gold on top, we can see that we have in a darker gold areas that are being refreshed. And so this is um, uh, also new for Texas to actually be in an era where we have areas in Texas that are being refreshed because the imagery are aging um, as far as um, standards for LIDAR go for, um, for usability of the data. So that has happened along the coast, as you can see here. Um, if I click on this area, it's a USGS collection. We have had federal partners come to Texas and cover large amounts of our state, um, especially in the past couple years. And so this was flown in 2018. Um, along the coast by the USGS. And because it's gold, that means that we don't have it available yet. You can see the status as acquired and in production. And so um, in general, um, if you see data here that were flown in 2018, we don't expect 
to get those until probably sometime around the end of this year or early next year. Generally, from our federal um, projects, we don't see that data actually become available for a year or a year and a half after, after it's been flown. And that has to do with their processing and QAQC um, techniques. And so again, if I click over, you know, up on um, one of these other collections in 2018, the same thing, acquired in production. If I go over to West Texas, these are actually our, some of the 2019 USDF um, projects um, that are being flown this season right now. And so they're not even finished being flown right now. So it's those data capture in progress. So we won't see these data for that are labeled as 2019 until probably sometime around the end of 2020 or early 2021. So don't hold your breath, but um, we are excited to see um, our state um, get covered in full uh, finally. So one more note about the LIDAR that I do want to mention to you is that there is a difference in the specification uh, from some of our state pro statewide projects and our um, and the federal projects. The federal projects have a limited um, number of classes that are uh, that have where the points have been classified to say this point is vegetation, this point is building, um, et cetera. And um, for our strat map projects, we do get the full um, set of classes per ASTRS, which is the uh, the uh, stand, the body that makes um, geospatial data standards for LIDAR data. Uh, but the federal um, projects will usually only have um, two classes, the bare earth and unclassified. So what we would like to do is go back and classify a lot of that data. Uh, and we could see uh, many applications um, for that data, such as looking for um, building height information um, that could be used in emergency situations if these data are classified. Um, so our lead here at Tenerus is Joey Thomas uh, for our LIDAR elevation data products. So um, we can get you in touch with him at, at any time. Let me go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, I'm going to switch over to ortho imagery now. So this is um, this is our history. <laughs> it's a little bit more um, colorful for compared to lidar um, because aerial photography is a much older um, technology. Um, and so in Texas, you know, we do have an archive of um, film based aerial um, historic photography here at Tenris that dates back to the 1920s. But as far as our digital um, acquisitions, these started in, in, their, in the mid-90s. And this is actually when the StratMap program was, um, was developed. So um, back then, um, we contributed um, from state agencies 1.1 $1.9 million to a total of $18.8 million for that um, data set, which is huge compared to, if you look down at the bottom of the list in 2018, we're paying more like $1.1 million for statewide imagery and at a much uh, finer pixel resolution. So um, other things to note about this lineage is that in 2004, this was the first time that NAEP, the National Agriculture Imagery Program, uh, flew Texas. This is when that program got started. Um, we contributed um, funds for that in order to get our state covered. Um, and then in 2008, NAEP came back again and we um, partnered with them in order to increase the pixel resolution to half meter. Um, and then we got on a cycle with NAEP of being flown every other year in Texas, which um, we've been taking um, full advantage of. NAEP um, flies during the growing season, so uh, during leaf-on conditions from about April through October in our state. 
Well, in 2015, we um, invoked our own program, again, the Texas Ortho Imagery Program. That's the one that's uh, managed out of our office at Tenris. And um, the state agencies got together and decided that we wanted to have Texas flown uh, solely during leaf off conditions. So in the December through February, March timeframe for, for Texas. Um, and we increased the pixel resolution to half meter at that time. Um, all of these top and NAPE data sets are in the public domain and are, and are available for download um, from Tenris and is available as streaming WMS services. Um, in 2015, we started a pilot with what's called the Texas Imagery Service. And this is a licensed product of statewide six inch aerial imagery flown by Google. So it's the same kind of imagery that you see on Google Maps and Google Earth, although minus the oblique views. Um, so it's just the purely nadir aerial views um, from Google. So we went into a contract with them for, again, a pilot. Under their license, only uh, government agencies in Texas um, are um, open to using it under our license and their contractors. So we made it available um, for free during that pilot time period. And then um, in 2017, we saw that enough folks were using it and they're finding full benefit from it that we went under our, a subscription plan and that's why um, you'll see year one for our first year of the subscription with the um, Google Texas Imagery Service. Um, we um, continued on into a year two, uh, which is what we're in right now for that service. And I, I have more details more slides on that and how that works um, in a moment. Um, and then also we have Nate flying in 2018, um, again, here in Texas, but at a 0.6 meter pixel resolution. So they've increased their um, default of one meter to 0.6 meter um, in Texas. So I guess the main thing to, to get from this slide is that we have three things going on in Texas for statewide um, imagery. We have NAEP, we have our own program run out of the state um, called TOP, and which definitely mimics NAEP, and we have the Texas Imagery Service, which is just a service-based imagery option under the licensed product. So for Nate, just some more details on that for um, 2018. Um, we uh, we heard from the federal program um, USDA that Texas would actually not be flown um, in 2018, and then um, lo and behold, in September they were able to get funds approved in order to fly Texas, which is much later than they would normally start flights. They would normally start in the April timeframe, and for 2018, they started in September. <laughs> so they have just now uh, wrapped up flights um, for this um, data set. So um, the data are in process right now. They're processing right now, and they'll go under inspection through the federal program. Um, and um, these should be available, again, downloadable, and in a service from Tenris in the early summer time period. Um, of course, uh, because of the volatileness of NAEP this year, it's unclear whether Texas will be flown again in 2020. Uh, it's undetermined, and so we are gauging interest in order to invoke our Texas Ortho Imagery program again um, to see um, if that is an interest to um, stakeholders um, in order to have that public data set um, available. So that's always there and we're we're here to fill the state when the when the NAEP program can. Um, so details on the Texas Imagery Service for any of you that aren't familiar with it. Um, it is six inch pixel resolution imagery across the state from Google. The map on the right shows how Google actually flies um, the state um, in their flight blocks, and so it is a mix of time periods. So that's a kind of a critical difference between our NAEP and TOP 
imagery. So some of these blocks are flown every year, like the heavily populated areas, and some of them are flown every other year, some of them every third year, and very rarely we have just a few blocks that are very rural that might not be updated um, for, until every fourth year. But those updates are automatic to the user. They don't have to do anything. <laughs> we don't have to do anything to ask for those blocks necessarily. It's all covered in our subscription. And everybody in the subscription gets the same data set, the full state. Um, we have data um, in here from 2011 uh, to the present. And they're, they're flying actually right now <laughs> in this winter time frame in Texas. Um, it is also a mix, I should say, of um, leaf on and leaf off imagery. So they do try to stay in Texas during the winter time frame, but you will see some October and some April, May in there that um, have some full leaf out on them. It's a streaming data set service. Download capability is available, but we um, discourage it because of the arduous nature of it. <laughs> and so um, that is one powerful part of the service is that you can just plug your, your plug it right into your software and, and get going, kind of just like streaming movies through Netflix. <laughs> um, it is an annual subscription. Uh, this is the cost. Um, model for the subscription. Um, you'll see that state agencies are on a tiered model for dependent on their usage of the service. And then if you're from a regional agency, you pay a flat fee of 15,000 a year. And if you're with a local agency, you pay a flat fee of $6,000 per year. And we can help you um, get you more information about getting set up with that at any time. Um, it is our largest cost share ge of geographic data to date. We currently have over 30 participants that are paying into this um, cost share. And we will um, be getting ready to start our year three subscription, which starts on the state fiscal year of September 1. Um, and in general, you, you're enjoying a 40% discount compared to the general market price that we re received from Google um, in order to you know, come into this um, uh, uh, purchase altogether. Um, we do have on our webpage that you can request the 14 day free um, trial link. We can set you up with that. We can work with you on that. You can join at any time for a prorated fee as well. Can you describe the difference between a local and a regional agency? Sure. So a regional agency is basically your jurisdiction is larger than uh, one, one county in size. And for a local agency, this would be um, county, um, a, a county government, a city, an appraisal district, etc. I think it's also important to note that if you are a private entity that's contracting with any of these uh, regional, state, or local uh, entities or agencies, that um, you can also utilize the service um, as long as the um, as long as the entity uh, requests a link on your behalf. Yes, we have many, many um, private entities doing that on behalf of um, other, other agencies. Yeah. So like I said, uh, this is just a funny graphic just showing a bunch of different planes. These, are not, like it. these are not the Google planes, but um, they are busy this winter season refreshing a lot of our, uh, a lot of flight blocks in Texas. And so this is just, a list of the flights that they have let us know about, but they are not guaranteed because they do still need to pass um, internal QC to Google. So don't make any plans around these, but just know that um, these are some of the more recent areas um, that are being updated into the service. Again, totally behind the scenes to the user. Um, we let um, all the users know when an update um, has become available through email and we post the, those updates on our website. Um, one more thing I wanted to let you know about StratMap before um, uh, I get into the contracting mechanism is that um, we, in the very beginning of StratMap in the 90s, you know, we can't we can't do this just with nothing. <laughs> we have to have funding in order to to um, make sure that we have these statewide um, based data sets available um, to the public. So. Um, 
uh, in 2011, we have been zeroed out for any um, data uh, purchases for the StratMap program on its own. And so for this year, um, for this legislative session, we have put in a formal request. Our agency, the Texas Water Development Board, has put in a formal request to refund the StratMap program. So stay tuned for more information on that. We're really looking forward to, be to being able to do even more in the future with um, these statewide data sets. So one way that we're able to um, purchase these data um, very efficiently is through a, a set of master contracts. And so right now we have 16 um, uh, commercial providers that are on contract, um, they're actually through the Department of Information Resources in order to, for any agency, again, in Texas, government agency can use these, not just us at Tenris, for geospatial data, services, or software. And so um, these have been uh, in place for um, three years now. Um, they actually will expire in September, I mean, in the spring of 2020. So at the end of this year, we are going to open up um, the bid again to rebid all of our pre-qualified commercial um, providers into a new list of um, StratMap contractors. So if you are um, a commercial vendor on the phone and are interested in getting on to this set of contracts, please, you can let us know by um, contacting us and I can put you on our email list to let you know further information about when this opens back up again near the end of the year, probably looking at the October, November timeframe, um, because we'd love to have you. I envision this list being double, if not triple, the size that it is now in order to um, provide as many um, geospatial data services and software um, to our um, governments in Texas. Um, this, I don't have a lot of time to go over this, but um, this is basically just um, our uh, how traffic for these contracts has increased. Um, from our first fiscal year of 2017 to our second complete fiscal year of 2018 <laughs> and how um, our number of purchases has increased, the dollar amount has, has increased, um, and a lot of that has to do with GIS software. We have Esri on there <laughs> and our number of purchases per customer type you can see on there that our local and regional are really um, using these contracts. And so we, we look forward to seeing these numbers grow as well. I will also mention that there are discounts associated with each of um, the products and services available from these contracts. Um, we are actively working to digitize, I'm just uh, changing gears a little bit. I mentioned our historic um, photo archives that we have had here accessible in the basement for walk-ins. People come and touch this archive on a daily basis, <laughs> and it's ridiculous that it's not in a digital form. And that's not um, because we're lazy, <laughs> it's because it's so huge. We have million, about a million frames of photography that um, we really needed a, a push to get these all scanned and so we are uh, have funding in order to do that this year. And so look for this in the future for um, our uh, historic um, photography to be online. Um, I'm not pr definitely not promising that this year, but at least they'll be in a digital form and closer to being online um, in the coming years. So we have our statement of work released right now. So if any of you are interested in contacting our primes <laughs> that that statement of work went to, please get in touch with me and I can let you know how to do that to become a sub if you're interested in that scanning project. Okay, I'm gonna turn it back over to Felicia. I'm gonna go as fast as I possibly can because we definitely wanna have some questions. So I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about uh, that our 2019 course schedule, one of the things that we do uh, here at Generous is make sure that we negotiate prices and get the most are the best instructors uh, available out there to uh, to teach um, the different um, facets of GIS. So if you're interested, the 2019 course schedule is out. 
please go to our website and, um, and register. Uh, we really encourage you uh, to, to take advantage of this. Uh, oftentimes, if we don't get enough registrations, we have to cancel classes, and that's not really good for the ones that do register. So if you have the budget and you um, have the uh, uh, flexibility to take those classes, please do. Um, the next uh, one I want to tell you about is the Geo Rodeo. It's the seventh annual Geo Rodeo, and it's around the corner, coming up in May. Um, you're going to get two for one this year, because this year we're partnering up with uh, J, uh, JS Geo. So uh, they will have their um, their event on that Friday. Mm -hmm. That's the 17th, and we're in the Geo Rodeo is on the 16th. So you get two for one. Um, it takes place at the Austin Central Library, so we are moving uh, uh, the, the location. So we hope that um, that you can sign up for that. So as soon as registration opens, we'll tweet that out. Um, but for now, we are still taking um, presentation proposals. So if you if you're out there and you want to talk a little bit about what it is that you're doing, um, whether you're a developer and you want to bring some tips and tricks, uh, or in my case, some head spinning concepts, please please uh, send that, submit. So um, also, if you went to the GIS um, forum last year in October, the keynote videos are now online. Um, uh, and if you didn't go, you are privy to that. So please go to our website um, and, and check out those keynote videos. I will tell you both speakers were stellar. Um, Carpe then, Geo. Car Carpe Geo, that's right. Bill, uh, Bill Johnson, the former uh, GIO of New York State, was, was excellent. He was on, on day two. Um, and then save the date for next year, please come. And also, uh, oops, sorry, I'm just getting a little too ahead of myself. Save the date, October 21st through the 25th of 2019. If you have something awesome to say, we would love to have you um, present. Um, and if you just want to come, uh, uh, please feel free. And if you have any suggestions on how we can improve it, we are willing to take those suggestions. And um, we've been doing this a very long time. Um, so, you know, over 30 years, obviously. Um, and so we uh, we encourage you to to give us give us some feedback. Um, and that concludes our presentation. We really appreciate get, having this opportunity to talk to everyone today, and uh, we will open it up for questions. All right. Well, great presentation. Uh, thank you all. Uh, got a few questions here. I'm going to try to uh, unmute a couple of my uh, colleagues here to help out. So mm -hmm. Ollie and Patrick. Um, one of the first questions here, uh, we've got about nine minutes left here. Um, is the parcel and address data available as WMS, feature service, et cetera? So at this time, they are not. But uh, that's definitely a goal of ours to get there eventually. These first few years, uh, you know, our baby steps, we have to crawl before we can run. So <laughs> we're really concentrating on building those relationships right now and just getting the data as is. Eventually, you know, we would like a standard schema, we would like services, we would like monthly updates, but we're not there yet. So just be patient with us. Um, there's gonna be a lot of good data out there. It's just, it's not gonna be in services right away. Okay, very good. Uh, where can we access uh, these dated blocks of TIS imagery? I think that's maybe hopefully I spelled it correctly or tenor yeah if you are if you are a um, participant in uh, the Texas imagery service um, I can uh, navigate you online through your preview links how to get to that information otherwise if you're not I'm actually working on a map right now that shows our current coverage and the date unfortunately we're not able to put that information on our website and available to the public so if you uh, contact me, this is Gayla Mullen at um, twdb.texas.gov. I can send you um, that information. Okay, perfect. Um, let's see here. Could local agencies such as a county share with another local agency such as a city within the uh, county? And I assume this is for the Google imagery. Um, no, because it is a licensed data product. It's um, you have you get a set of unique links to the service. And so the um, city participant would pay for a unique set of links and then the county participant would um, pay for a unique set of links. And they're, um, 
And it's just one set of links per agency. So it's not like you have to have one for every user in your county uh, office. Um, uh, but we do, uh, under the license, they are unshareable. Yeah, the, 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 the cost of the imagery services to the state is about 1.2 million and rising um, because of storage costs. But um, so we, you know, we, we did our best to try to give a flat rate to the locals um, so that they have unlimited um, uh, access to it. Um, everyone else gets, or all the other state agencies get measured. So we would appreciate it if we, if we could stick to one in, uh, link per, um, per entity. And I'm going to add to that there's a really great FAQ link on the website for the Texas Imagery Service. There's a very comprehensive FAQ list. We can go to the next question. Yep. Yeah. Well, just to follow up on that real fast. Uh, so, so it, 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 on on the local, just to so everybody understands it, the, the a local. Let's say, is that like a a Kyle or a Buda, or, or is that considered a local? So, mm -hmm. so let's say Kyle. Right. I'm just a complete example. Uh, wanted to have this on a yearly subscription. It's a flat fee of six thousand under the the rate change you all recently did. Yeah, that is correct. Okay, and now, like, what about like Austin? Is that considered regional? Austin is uh, local, so they are also six thousand. Okay, okay, that that was mm -hmm. the big thing in my mind that I wanted to just walk away from was. Do we, the, you know, know, one, 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 one. Yeah, nice. it was hard, it's difficult for us to, you know, a city of Houston versus a city of Kyle, but so we we did our best to to okay. just. Yeah, but I thought it's not a one. Very nice. Uh, the other question here, and, and Felicia and you guys might uh, have a chance to talk about this. We got about five minutes. Is the Texas GIS oh, mentor sh mentorship program still active? And, and, and how can you get involved? It, it, it is. Um, we still have the web page up, um, and you can still sign up for it. Um, I will say that it was, it, you know, the 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 participation. Um, you know, it's been a little difficult to get it off the ground um, in terms of people having time and being able to connect. Um, but we're still very much interested in, um, in, in, in hosting it and in having it. And um, so if, if you're having trouble or if you feel like you're not, um, any of your questions weren't answered or if you're not being um, contacted uh, once you fill out the form, please let us know. But I think, um, yes, it's definitely still, still up there and we still are very interested in connecting people. And uh, Janie has a question here for you um, uh, regarding uh, how can we give you feedback for this year's forum? What's the best uh, contact link? You, we have several ways. You could either uh, email one of us personally, um, our, our uh, information's on there, or you can go to contact us up above, right, right there, yep, and fill out a form. You can do general question or comments, and that will go to, um, to our group, and then, and then we can all uh, constitute Look at look at it and like we'll get assigned to one of us. That's right. It'll get, it'll get, it'll get assigned. And we and we definitely take your suggestions seriously. So please please give it give give us all you got. Okay. All right. There's one more question here. Um, as a student, is there data that can be downloaded and used in a final portfolio project to be graded? Absolutely. All of the data that are available in the Tenerife Data Catalog are in the public domain, which means that they are available to anybody, including students, to be used, you know, in your in your dissertation work. Um, we do ask for a source credit on that um, or the appropriate. Um, so some of our data sets, um, you know, if they're like a USGS data set, then you would source the USGS. But here is the listing of all of our public data sets. So today, the only non-public data set is the, is the Google Texas Imagery Service. So everything else here, yes, use it will, <laughs> including the parcels and address points that are coming online. Yep. Okay. Well, I don't know if we have any more questions here. We've got about three minutes. Um, I want to go ahead and really thank you all for uh, uh, taking the time today. Alicia and Ileana and, and Gayla, uh, really, really appreciate it. So we're going to go ahead and um, uh, post this uh, once I get it downloaded, uh, and we'll get it up to the Google uh, YouTube site, and um, 
we'll be sending out links and have it posted to our website. Everybody, you can uh, see the copy of the presentation today on the URSA Texas uh, website. Um, and Ollie, uh, Patrick, uh, anything else we need to, to cover? I think we've got everything nope. covered so far. We're good. Okay. If anybody has any questions uh, regarding today's uh, presentation, feel free to uh, contact us at um, our email address, and, um, or you can contact the uh, presenters uh, at Tenerys uh, as they've, they've put up their, their contact information on the last slide. So, but uh, other than that, I um, hope everybody has a good rest of the week, and we really appreciate it. Uh, and look forward to seeing you all again for the next speaker series in uh, March. So, again, thank you all. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And just a reminder, if you didn't actually sign up on the website, could you please email us your name and email address so we can make sure that you get your PDH certificate? It looks like I saw a uh, high of 92 today, but it might be a little bit more than that. So, at any rate, uh, again, thank you all and have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.